so our third speaker um, is Estrella Merlos. She is the Associate Director of CFAL, the Global Network United Nations Institute for Training and Research, or UNITAR. She joined UNITAR in May of 2013 and is responsible for overseeing, coordinating, and supporting the CFAL Global Network, which is comprised of 18 training centers. Previously, Estrella served as president of UNITAR's training centers in the United States. CFAL Atlanta, working together with strategic partners, various United Nations agencies and donors, and leading the development and implementation of training programs. Um, prior to joining CFAL, Estrella worked as the chief economist at the National Association of the Private Sector in El Salvador, where she developed socioeconomic policy proposals for government administrations. Um, let's see. Estrella is a native of El Salvador. She graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Economics from the Central American University, Jose Simeon Cañas, and a Master in Public Administration just down the road at Georgia State. Um, she was a Fulbright Scholar in the United States studying public policy, urban planning, and economic development. And today the title of her presentation is Transforming Mindsets Through Capacity Building for a More Sustainable World. So join me in welcoming Estrella Merlos. Well, good morning. It is uh, quite an honor to be here uh, today with all of you and participating in the Gender Identity and Youth Empowerment in Morocco International Conference. I am particularly honored to be in this panel, not only because it addresses a crucial topic, the crucial topic of education, and, and let me tell you why this is so important to me uh, personally. <clears throat> Number one is because as a female from the Global South, I understand that education matters, and I believe in the transformative power of education. And the second reason is because I do work and represent an organization that is committed to do exactly that, to transforming, empowering individuals and organizations through education, through training, and through capacity building. And it is a, a distinct honor to, to be here today on behalf of UNITAR, which is the United Nations Institute for Training and Research, based in Switzerland. And uh, please allow me just quickly to tell you a little bit about who we are and, and, and then I will give you a few examples on what we do uh, on the ground to support not only government officials but also civil society leaders uh, and those that make decisions on a daily basis. So UNITAR was created in the 60s uh, when the United Nations was formed and at that time uh, of course, uh, there was a new organization called the United Nations coming from the League of Nations and many governments had the need or, 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 or countries had the need to send diplomats to become the representatives of those countries to the United Nations. So UNITAR was created with that particular purpose of providing training to diplomats uh, who will then negotiate agreements on behalf of their government. But since then, and of course 50, more than 50 years later, the role of UNITAR has changed and has expanded. But at the core of our work is to continue to train diplomats around the world. And uh, this is just a, a, a quick overview of the UN system. We are one of, the, uh, one of three training agencies within the United Nations system. I'm sure you're very familiar with, with some of those organizations, others not so so well known. Uh, UNITAR is one, one of those and, and, and was created by a resolution of the General Assembly back in 1963. Um, uh, what you, uh, our, mission, our mission is to uh, develop individual and institutional capacities uh, around the world through high quality training and education. And uh, our vision is a world in which organizations and individuals are empowered to address global challenges. Uh, what are our core functions? I, I, I already mentioned in a nutshell, our core functions is to provide training programs, uh, a, a wide range of learning opportunities 
Uh, also, we provide advice and technical assistance to governments and to also private sector corporations and many organizations around the world on how to address uh, global challenges that are common to all. We also develop training methodologies that serve the entire UN system to facilitate the exchange of best practices among other UN agencies. And this is where we are around the world. We are where our headquarters are in Switzerland, in, in Geneva. Uh, but we do have uh, other offices in New York through which we provide training to diplomats. We also have a project office in Nigeria. And we have another uh, office in, in Japan, in Hiroshima. Uh, in addition, we have a network of training centers that we call CIFAL network. The CIFAL is a French acronym, acronym and it stands for International Training Center for Authorities and Leaders. We have the privilege to have one CIFAL center here in Atlanta, and it's not a coincidence that it's here in, in, at Kennesaw State University. Uh, we at UNITRA believe that uh, academic institutions are, are essential partners uh, for, for the UN system, and, and, and we cannot hope to achieve the sustainable development goals without partners like academic institutions. So it's no coincidence that we do have a training center here hosted by the Division of Global Affairs and, and we're very, very, very pleased about uh, this partnership with Kennesaw State University and with other universities around the world or governments who, with which we work. We also have some project offices in, in Africa mainly uh, through which we assist also government, governments and countries in particular areas. Uh, we are, our areas of work are, are, are very much aligned to the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development. Um, as you may uh, remember, the Agenda 2030 is based on five pillars, people, planet, peace, prosperity, and partnerships. And this is, uh, this is how our organization is structured and aligned so that we address those uh, areas as well. So we work on, on, on a diversity of issues, but mainly covering areas related to peace, people, prosperity, planet. Uh, also, we work on uh, diplomacy. We also provide uh, assistance and training on how to implement what we call Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development and the Sustainable Development Goals. And also, uh, we conduct uh, research, uh, and I will explain a little bit on, on specifically in which area. Uh, just uh, a, few, a few, again, a few examples of what we do. Uh, knowing the, the short amount of time that we have. But this is the, uh, the map of our CIFAR Global Network. This network is dedicated specifically to provide training and, and assistance to local governments. Uh, local governments, we have heard about the importance of cities and not just urban areas, but also rural areas. And we believe that local authorities are those in, in, in touch with, the, with their, those that are daily in, in da daily in touch with their constituencies and those that are closest to the needs of those communities. So we work very closely and supporting local authorities uh, on how to implement the sustainable development goals at the local level. That's the main focus of the CIFAR Global Network. Of, of course, not exclusively, but that's the main focus of the, of the CIFAR Global Network. Uh, what, what we have achieved last year just through the CIFAL centers, this is 18 training centers around the world. Uh, we have uh, trained almost 25,000 beneficiaries coming from the public, the private sector, civil society, NGOs, uh, faith-based organizations, youth, among many others. Uh, we do that, of course, in partnership with uh, a, a diverse group of stakeholders uh, from different sectors uh, as well. Uh, what, also, just a highlight of another uh, initiative, and, and I would like to uh, just call, call the attention on, on this one, because it's one that really touches my heart. Uh, road accidents are the leading cause of death among young people between 14 and 24 years of age. And what, what really uh, strikes me the most is that this is something that can be not only prevented, but also predicted. So at UNITER, we have taken this as a, as a commitment. We are working together with different governments around the world to raise awareness, not only among uh, government authorities, but also among citizens, especially youth, about the importance of a, a culture that respects um, uh, traffic uh, rules and principles. So, so through training and education, 
we're aiming to change behaviors so that we can contribute to reduce the number of fatalities and injuries by 2030, as the Agenda 2030 calls for. Uh, also, in another example, in Africa, in, in South Sudan, we are also training uh, military and police uh, on uh, conflict prevention and peacekeeping. This is our just, just examples on how, through education and training, we're aiming to change uh, mindsets, behaviors, and, 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 and create change. Uh, also, um, on, on issues as diverse as peacekeeping to climate change, we also have learning tools that uh, aim to empower individuals with knowledge on how to respond to issues or uh, like, like climate change. Uh, also on, on this particular area of applied research, I'm very proud to say that UNITAR is the only agency within the United Nations system that has this particular program called UNOSAT. So when a disaster strikes in, in, a, in a given country, uh, we tend to think that perhaps the Red, uh, Red Cross is the first to respond or those humanitarian agencies are the first responders. They are not, we are actually, we are UNITAR. We are the ones that provide, Im, uh, provide satellite imagery to governments and to those agencies in charge of mobilizing aid so that they know where the impact of disasters have taken place, wh wh where is the loss, and, and how to channel better that aid. So that's, that's one of the, I think one of the most important things that we do at UNITAR and, and no other agency is, is, is doing that um, in, the, in the system. Also, as I said, we provide uh, training to government officials on how to implement uh, the Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals. We know that uh, we have 17 goals, 169 targets, but the, 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 the crucial part of that is how do we implement that and how do we bring those goals to reality in our communities. That's part of what, what we do as well through training and education of um, government officers and civil society leaders. Uh, as I mentioned, we continue to also work with young diplomats, those that are uh, entering the diplomatic world uh, and help them to uh, learn about the UN system and multilateralism and, and, and how to negotiate agreements on behalf of their government. Uh, also, uh, we have a, uh, our Assistant Secretary General is very much committed to the empowerment of women. So just um, a, a few years ago, we launched a initiative that aims to empower women through learning methodologies, technology, and, and many other uh, areas. And finally, uh, we couldn't do that without uh, partners around the world, and we do work with different organizations worldwide from the public-private sectors to enhance awareness on our global responsibility or our, on our own responsibility um, on, on global issues and, and to come up with innovative solutions to address those, those problems. Okay, and that, um, and, and finally, uh, just to, to conclude, to say that uh, we are uh, committed to uh, continuing our work on education, training, and capacity building, and as we continue our, our work, we look forward to the opportunity of joining forces with academic institutions uh, here in Morocco, wh wh wherever we are working in the world, we are delighted to join forces. We understand that the global challenges that we face cannot be addressed by any sector or by one, by one sector or individual alone. The, the challenges really surpass the capabilities of any sector or organization. So we must uh, work in partnership and, and, and that's what uh, I would like to highlight today that uh, we look forward to identifying opportunities for collaboration as we do uh, with Kansas State University to continue to empowering not just uh, those that are now making decisions on our behalf uh, in, in different countries or governments, but also those that are going to be leaders. And, and I think that's where universities have a key role to play, that you are training and educating those that will make decisions, that will be in charge of designing and developing, developing future agendas. And, and, and that's our, our main interest, to be able to work together with you 
on that common objective. So thank you very much for your, for your attention.